All right, so what I'm going to do real fast is just go over what we did in class yesterday with naming each step of the way. I'll try to do a short video to kind of recap uh, as we continue to add steps to everything. This molecule that we named yesterday is the simplest uh, or one of the simplest types of organic molecules. It's a hydrocarbon. It has nothing but hydrogen and carbon in it. Um, when you're naming things, you use those rules that I gave you. We're only going to have nine. There's It gets a lot more complicated in reality, but for this class, we're only going to do the nine. And if you use those nine rules that I gave you, sort of like steps, uh, you should be good to go as far as figuring out uh, the name to any given compound. So starting at the top, rule number one for finding the name of any compound is to find the parent chain. Now, the parent chain is the longest continuous chain of carbons. Looking at this, um, a lot of people jump straight to, well, it's either got to be this or it's got to be this. And neither of those is correct. You have to remember that the longest chain might not be straight. And if you look at that, that in fact, those six carbons, is the longest continuous chain of carbons. So now we've identified the parent chain. That's rule number one. Number two, you have to number the carbon atoms in that parent chain. The numbers are going to become a part of the name because the numbers tell us where things are attached in that parent chain. The parent chain, uh, the name of the parent chain is going to become the base of the name, and we're just going to kind of add on to that. So you need to know the location where we're going to add on to the parent chain. There's two options for numbering the carbons. You can start down here at this carbon or up here. Rule number two says that you number them starting at the end that will give the groups attached the lowest numbers possible. So in other words, you want to number the chain so that you get to something fast or the fastest possible way. If I start at the bottom down here, you will have carbon number one at the bottom and then this carbon right here would be carbon number four. If, however, I start up here, that's only carbon three. That's where everything is attached. So that gets us to something faster, gets us to something at carbon three instead of carbon four. So we're going to number that way. Rule number three says that the groups attached are named based upon their makeup. So if you look at each group attached, both of these are made of carbon. So that means it's going to either have um, the prefix meth or eth um, or any of the other ones really but because it's carbon we're going to use the carbon prefixes all of those can be found on the back of the rule page that I gave you so I should probably actually take a step back with the parent chain you can actually go ahead and name the parent chain they all have single bonds that's all we've talked about so far single bonds and if you look at the back of the page there are prefixes and suffixes the prefixes will tell you the number of carbons involved in the group that you are currently focusing on, which in this case is going to be the parent chain. And then the suffixes tell you uh, a number of things. At the top, it kind of it says there, it tells you the type of bonding that's going on. We've only learned about single bonds. So the suffix is A-N-E, ane. Because it's not an add-on, you look down, there's a suffix for add-ons, which we'll talk about in a second for these things. Since it's the parent chain, you look at how many carbons there are. There's six. We numbered them. So the prefix for six is hex. And then, like I said, it's all single bonds. And it's not an add-on or anything. So the suffix is ane. So hexane. That's the parent chain. Now, we'll go back to the add-ons. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. The add-ons, the first thing you have to look at is where they are added on. So because they are added onto the third carbon, the first part of the name is going to be three. So let's let's just start with this top one up here. That is a group added on to carbon three. It's named after the type of group attached, which is carbon. So you look at your carbon prefixes. There's only one carbon on this add-on, so that means it's a meth prefix. Since it's an add-on, you look over at your suffixes, you're going to use the YL group. It's an alkyl group. Alkyl has the YL ending. Your add-on suffix also has the YL ending. So that is a methyl group 
on carbon number three. Now, looking at this one, you'll notice it is also a methyl group on carbon number three. So we have two methyl groups, both on carbon number three. So now we got rule three done. Go to rule four. It says if a group appears more than once, you have to give the appropriate prefix with a di, tri, tetra, etc. So we have two methyl groups. So instead of methyl, methyl, that means we can make that a dimethyl. Well, what about the number? We still have to identify it. Well, continue reading rule number four. It says if two or more of the same group are attached to the same carbon atom, the number is repeated. So you can't just say 3-dimethyl. You have to say 3-3-dimethyl because there's two methyl groups, both on carbon-3. Now, this is kind of out of order, but it's on rule number 9. For punctuation, you always put commas between numbers and dashes between numbers and letters, or numbers and words. So that's why I put a comma between the threes and a dash between the three and the dimethyl. So, we have finished the add-on naming. We finished the parent naming. So look at rule number five now. It says write the name. So we're going to do the whole name now. By first naming the attached groups with the carbon atom location number as a prefix. So we take this whole thing, and that's going to go first. So 3, comma 3, dimethyl. And then the second sentence says the final part of the name is the name of the parent compound. So the parent compound is hexane. So the name of this compound is 3,3-dimethylhexane. So I hope that it's not too confusing so far. Just remember to follow the rules like steps and use the back of that page, uh, the prefixes and suffixes, kind of just tell you what you're looking at. So find what you're looking for and then use the proper suffix, uh, suffixes and prefixes. Um, add them together. You should get the name. It does get more complicated than this. Don't worry. But hopefully if we take it a step at a time, uh, all will be well. So hope this was helpful.